Uh, this is about how to align the saw blade to the miter slots uh, or the T slots or whatever you want to call them. Uh, aligning the blade. Uh, this is not about the fence. This is the T slots being parallel with the blade. And the issues that I read about in most of the woodworking forums and in a couple of YouTube videos. Um, I checked my blade to see if it was parallel and sure enough I'm out we're gonna say 15 thousands let's say um, I checked it probably back and forth six or eight times I would say just just a quick initial check um, I wasn't extremely careful and I got numbers anywhere from like 11 to like 16, 17 thousandths or so. I'm not being extremely careful just yet because I just wanted to see, you know, which way is it if it's out? Is it that way? Is it this way? Or is it looking like it's really straight? And then I'm going to get more accurate. Back to the saw. So I read, like I said, I read the all the posts in the woodworking forums about how the sky is falling and you know it's out 15, 18 thousands. Um, underneath that pile right there, this is uh, the head, the nod, the yaw, all have to be checked when you get the saw. And you have to set them to be parallel, plumb. Uh, you have to square your vise um, with the table, uh, with the micrometer. Basically, what I'm saying is when you get something like this, you got to set it up. So, okay, the motor, the elevation, and the tilt. Uh, that whole operation, the whole mechanism is bolted to the bottom of this table in four places. Here, 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 and probably like right around here somewhere, somewhere like that. Uh, it's bolted under there through what they call trunnions. And if you look from underneath upwards, it looks kind of like this. It's got these, uh, oh, they're trunnions and there's four Allen bolts on there. The key that they give you to bolt the uh, sides and everything together, that Allen key for the wings is the Allen key that um, you loosen on these trunnions to bump it back into being parallel with the T-slots. Um, and the holes that these bolts go through they're not an extremely tight tolerance. There is a little bit of play in there. Um, it's like anything else. It's just like the, you know, the, the vise on my mill under that tarp. <laughs> you put it on and you have to line it up and there is a little play. So basically what I did is I loosened up one, two, three of the bolts. The fourth one, which is under here, is behind the motor. And that was tough to get to. You're going to be kind of doing this to get it parallel. Uh, now the end result of that might be that when you get your blade parallel, it might be, I'm going to exaggerate here, it might be that way, you know, one, two, three thousandths, or it might be that way, one, two, three thousandths. And if that matters to you for the work that you're doing, then loosen that fourth one, okay? And then instead of doing this, they're all loose and you can put it exactly wherever you want. You're not going to move it that much. You're, you're moving this thing, thicknesses of paper. 
Here's a single piece of paper. Alright, right, so that's one thickness of paper, four thousandths. We'll do two pieces of paper real quick. Two pieces, eight thousandths. All right, I was out fifteen thousandths. Let's do, we folded it for the fourth sheet. All right, fifteen thousandths. Four sheets of paper. It's not much, but it's not much, but it is important because that little bit of that saw being like that, when you run wood through it, you're more likely to get a piece of wood kicked back. Uh, could hurt you, could damage the uh, project you're trying to do. And if it doesn't kick back as you're running through, you can get uh, burn marks on the uh, on your cut. So basically, you want it, this needs to be parallel with these miter slots, and then you can come back later and you know align this, uh, align the fence with the blade. Let me show you underneath how you actually do it. So there's the saw, the side panel, side access panels off. Right. Now here is where the bolts are. There's the first one, right there. And I'll back, back up so you can see where it is. And there's the saw. That's the first one. That's the second one. And the next two are a little harder to show. I'll try to show you. There's the third one. Uh, that's back by where you would be standing. And then the fourth one, maybe I won't be able to show you, but it's around the bend there. Um, now when I say loosen, I don't mean loosen them where you can, you can't, you shouldn't be able to move this at all by hand. It's still pretty tight. It's just not like really tight. Like I say, it's, uh, all right, right there is where it gets hard. I'm just back like that much. Okay, and then what you're gonna do <clears throat> you get a rubber mallet. Okay, now you do not wanna honk on it like that. You're just gonna give it a couple little love taps, maybe not even that hard, just a little. Like that and see what happens. Um, in my case, this side of the blade was that way, 15 thousandths. All right, so I had to bump the trunnions over that way a couple of thou, retest, check it again, bump it over a little more. You don't want to hit it down here. Definitely don't want to hit it there or anywhere along this. Basically, right there, you tap it. Uh, I wish I had three hands to hold the light and the... Alright, so there's the bolt right there, okay? That's the bolt. Don't hit the bolt, because you might booger up the threads. Just go right here. Alright, there we go. That's a little better. You just... And give it a couple taps like maybe like like that hard just tap it a few times this is a Mitotoyu half thousands micrometer and I have it on a mag mount on the uh, miter gauge you don't need that it's just what I had all you really need is a uh, 
any little piece of uh, wood that'll fit in here. Obviously not something loose like anything that'll fit in here snug and be flush with the top of the table. I saw a guy had one strip of wood in here and then another one over the top of it. Uh, just with two little tacks and epoxy. And then he mounted a micrometer on that. Made a little micrometer mount. You definitely don't need a any kind of high-end micrometer to do this. Uh, the absolute number it is not important. It is the the difference between whatever you are on the side of one kerf over here. You could see that's the one I was using right there. So let me put that back over there. Do it once. Okay, so whatever whatever you do have in here, if there is any kind of like, see that? That slop? You have to make sure the whole thing is pulled this way every time you do it, pushing down in that way. You could push that way too. It doesn't matter as long as you're doing it the same way each time. So I pulled this way and down. Make sure it's in and to you. And then you want to get right on the side of one of these carbide tip. Right on the side of the kerf there. Try to be in the same spot. All right. And you zero your micrometer. You don't even really have to zero it. Like I said, it's the, rel the relative difference between what it is here and then when you spin and go over there. Right. So right there I'm at zero. Okay. So now I'm going to go to the other side. There's the same tooth. All right, again, I'm gonna push down on my miter gauge and pull towards me. Maybe that so you can see a little better. All right, so right there it's saying it's a half thou. Um, I think if you could get it within a thou or two that should be plenty good or three thousandths even. Um, I'm going to slide this right across here to show you this. Um, this blade that I have on here is not a high-end blade. Uh, let's see what kind of... Let's see, what, let's see what it looks like across that blade. Let me zero again. So that's about a one thousandth. Is that a thou? Yeah, that's a thou. Alright. And another thing you could also do, you see that blue mark there? You could come back and, okay, maybe spin that out of the way. Go over here and put a red mark. Alright, and then check that tooth there there and if that one's good maybe get a you know, like a green marker and pick another spot the more places you can check it the more sure you can be of your results you have to be pushing down 
and over on this if it's if it has slop in it. If it's real tight, whatever you rigged up to fit in there, if it's really nice and tight and snug, that's good. You just be aware that you know. I'll move this back and forth. You see that? That's seven thou just by moving that a little bit. So every time I took the measurement, I was careful to push down and this way, down and that way. Not real hard, just enough to keep it um, to register off this side here. And then make sure you wipe this out real good. Uh, get all the dust out of there. A little chip of wood, that's going to throw you off 10,000 easily. I said the Allen wrench that they give you to put the wings, that fits. What I ended up using was this. It's a, uh, what is it? It's an 8, I believe. It's probably not going to focus, but it's an H8, it says on it. Hex 8. Uh, it fit right on on the first two, and then for the one in the back, I used a long extension like that. Made it a little easier to get in there. And then once you're once you've gone back and forth a couple of times and you're happy with it, you know, then you can, you know, slide your fence over and square your fence. Um, square your fence with the blade. Um, while I'm over on this side, one other thing I notice is these wings. A lot of people complained about these um, you know, being so much of a, uh, a dip from here to here and you know, being all out of whack. <clears throat> I don't have it out right now, but I used a uh, any kind of good straight edge you have, just lay it across there. And then under here. You can, you know, loosen these a little bit and then put that so uh, this, so the fence slides right over it perfectly. Oh, my miter gauge is in the way. But you want it to slide right over this nice. There is a little give in it when you loosen those and you can kind of get it where you want it. I said, I saw so many complaints about these wings. You have to consider, it's this is only a $500 table saw. It's a lot of machine for $500. Um, if you're a cabinet maker, you know, then you're going to have a couple thousand dollar piece of equipment. You know. Another thing I saw some complaints about was nobody liked the uh, three-wheel caster system. Obviously, four wheels is better than three, of course. But I'm not having any trouble with the three with the uh, three wheels. I saw some comments about it. Couple people almost lost the saw with it tipping over. I'm going to put this on here. I'll just move it around a little bit. All right. The only time that I had it kind of start to wobble on me a little is when I did not move it from this position when I wasn't holding on here. When I was over on the side, it's even hard to do it, but you can see it's like you don't have it in your hands real good. And it possibly, I mean, it would be really hard. Maybe if you came across your garage floor and hit the drain. But when you lift up the caster mechanism, just stay in at that position when you move it. 
And it moves around real nice. It goes right around nice. So you don't want to be over here. I mean, obviously, you can move it from this side. Just be aware that you're not in the ideal position to stop it from wobbling. Goes nice. And I saw another guy on another video mention this. This is a good thing. When you put this mechanism together here, um, let me get something to point. Right in there. Let me see if I can. Probably not going to get it, but. Right in there, I put I added one washer. Uh, I saw a video where the guy said to add a washer here and here to take out the slop. Uh, I didn't have that much slop in this. I only had enough to get a washer on one side here. It just takes out any slop that might have been in between the caster and uh, this mount here. Uh, maybe you can see it better now. It's just one one washer right in there. Uh, the other video I saw, the guy put a washer in on this side and on this side. I only got one in. Um, and it worked out real nice. Uh, the whole mechanism, there's no play at all in it, no slop. And it works out real good. Alright, that's about it. Lots of other videos cover pretty much everything else on this. Uh,